There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. Of course, I am Jay Campbell and you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio from the tundra of Tennessee. <laughs> Pearl and Serene. Pearl and Serene, how are you? How are you, wonderful ladies? We're thawing out. Yes. The <laughs> snow has finally melted and I could make it out my driveway to Pearl's house. So that was like one mile. I made it one mile. But this is super odd for us because we grew up down under. I mean, yeah. uh, my teenage years were spent in Australia and, you know, the snow doesn't happen. We would yeah. sing, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, really dreaming. Truly. Right. Yeah. Not yeah. just while jumping in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> so how much snow do you guys have right now? Because I just flew up to Cincinnati for a funeral and it was so cold. My daughters had never, ever been in that cold weather before. It was just hilarious because, you know, the snow would thaw in the day and then it would instantly freeze within a half an hour. They would be loving slide on the on the concrete. Yeah. Well, talking about sliding, anyone who'd came, come to visit us, if they could make it courageously down our driveway, as soon as they put their foot out onto you know, the earth, they'd, they'd be disappeared. They'd be a flat on the back. A friend just broke his ankle coming to visit us. So everything. It's because we're up on a hill. You know, I was used to it, you know. Woods. But we got about seven inches. That's a lot for Tennessee. Yeah. And yeah. it all turned to yeah. ice because we had a little bit of a thaw and then a freezing rain and then it snowed again. So it was, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I caught the tail end of that because we flew in late Friday night and went to the funeral and the wake and all that on Saturday. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was the snow had already landed, I think, on Thursday and Friday of last week. So it was probably the same thing. It was about six inches. Yeah. And then ice on top of it. But uh, yeah, so I mean, where you guys are, it's usually not that cold, but it's been getting colder and stuff like that. So very interesting. We have very interesting times. But you, for you guys and gals that don't know these two lovely young ladies, it's Serene Thanks Allison and Pope Merritt. And they are, of course, best-selling authors, of course, podcast hosts. They have a giant 1 million strong community and their podcast is the Trim Healthy Podcast. And they had me on their podcast, what was it, ladies, a couple of months ago. And it was actually an amazing podcast because they asked me the most incredible questions. Actually, probably for a lot of people that I interview in the podcast, I mean, in the biohacking community, didn't ask the level of questions that they did. So I had to have them come on my podcast today. And we're going to talk about a lot of different things. But let me just ask both of you guys, because you guys both are very strongly opinionated. Um, I'm <laughs> doing least. this. I'm doing this with pretty much everybody I do. I'm, I'm interviewing in 2024, you know, just kind of the state of the world. Like, where do you see the United States, really, I guess, humanity going in the next three to five years? Like, are you guys buyers or sellers of humans? <laughs> uh, like, Liz, I think I need to zip because I'm uh, so like, counterculture i'll probably just like we'll annihilate annihilate your audience our audience if she talks no i don't know i think you'd say though you know we're sisters we grew up grew up past as kids right yeah. so we're hopers i mean yeah. we always have hope no matter yeah. what i think yeah. things look dark sometimes but i'm not going to give up right i i do think things look dark and i and i don't love the way our our culture as a whole is is heading but yeah um we like to just, you know, get up every day and just put some faith into it. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask you this because you guys are both from down under and I have actually a huge following in Australia. In fact, I probably yeah. get I probably get 20 messages a day between all comms from people in Australia. And it's always the number one question. If I buy peptides, yeah. will they make it to me? And I always say that, you know, my answer is always, well, they might. Right. Yeah, yeah. We had right. to stop shipping for to Australia. They wouldn't let our collagen in. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to ask you because if there's anyone that answer that can answer this question. So when when I before I sold my uh, peptide cosmeceutical company in 2022, uh, we did ship to Australia. Australia played so many games with us. We had to actually change our formulation for one of our products just 
for Australia because again, you know, they have this very draconian rules. I think it's the Ministry of Health. I think, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it, they do have a Ministry of Health in Australia, correct? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. I mean, I, you know, we were teenagers. I mean, you were a little yeah. girl. As we've lived in the U.S. for thirty years, but from I know, what I can I remember, <laughs> it's yeah. a strict, strict rules. We love, we love our country, and we've gone back many times. Um, you know, it's in our blood, it's in our heart, and our relatives still live there. But um, it was a tough place a couple of years ago. It was a mm. tough place to to well, ride I, out that I storm. Find people, this is my opinion, but I find people from Australia the most awake on the planet. It's almost like they. Again, the government, you know, whoever's behind the government, that's another show. I do have my tinfoil hat on over there if you guys want me to put it on. But uh, uh, the government there is very draconian in a lot of ways. So it's like, you know, I've heard so many stories from, uh, again, Native Australians, and and then they, they message me every day. I mean, I, like I said, I get literally 15, 20 messages, you know, between Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and email, and even to my, you know, contact forms and stuff like that. But um, it's always the same thing around that. So, do you see, and again, I know you guys live here and you're U.S. citizens and all that stuff, but do you see Australia changing in any way? Because again, there's just so many awake and aware people in Australia. I mean, and, and they have such draconian government measures. I I, I, I hate to jump in first, per, uh, Pearl, but um, I think, you know, I think people tried to break out um, mm -hmm. of the very, very strict overarching big brother yeah. situation down there and it, it didn't seem to go well with them but um even with the big trucky movement that yeah. broke out down there but i'm just yeah, yeah. Tides I'm turn. Tides turn. Tides turn. yeah i mean like we i just talked to my cousin who's you know my age going through menopause trying to get on hormones down there and it's a different story like here yeah. things are starting to open up where you can direct your own path find yes. find a practitioner Go yes. on, as a woman, get some testosterone. Over yes. there, it's like, this is, well, this is what I heard from her. I'm like, well, she's like, I I got some, you know, estradiol and progesterone. I'm like, well, where's your tea? Where's your testosterone? Oh, they don't do that. So I, I'm not sure, you know, I, I, I hope that they get the same freedom we have in, in many areas. They need it. Mm -hmm. Women yeah. need it. Men need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, we're, and we'll talk more about that. I mean- well, so if you, we can talk off air or whenever you guys can text me, but um, I do have a couple of clinics now that I will recommend to people that work with pretty much anyone in Australia. They're based yeah. in Australia and they do, they do do hormones and peptides. So mm. my hope is that Australia does open up. Um, you know, again, like I said, that's the number one question. Can I send the peptides? Can you recommend mm -hmm. a TOT doctor for me? You know, and as always previously, I wish I could, but now I actually do have a couple of clinics. So I think- <laughs> I think it is opening up and that's what's always kind of blown me away is it just the level of awareness that people in Australia have, like compared to like other, if I'm comparing yeah. Australia to EU countries, the level of awareness of Australians is way, way And higher. that's, that's an amazing thing. Cause you know, there's a lot of, um, there are pathways, there's doors open here in America. There's just yeah. not as much awareness. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, in our age group with women, um, yeah. they just think maybe that, that this is their, this is their, this is their suffering stage, you know, that they this is they go downhill from here and it's just kind of like a reality to them. They don't know that there's another option and then there's another yeah. way that they can thrive, you know, yeah. um, in their pause seasons. Well, I want to talk about that with both of you because, I mean, obviously my audience is not as familiar with you, but all they have to do is look at you and they can tell you guys are both toned, jacked, ripped, whatever, whatever you want to talk about, you want to phrase it. And, and you know, that's obviously a credit to both of you, but when we were speaking about peptides on the podcast that you had me on, if I'm, if I'm correct and I remember correctly, you're both hormonally optimized, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm post-menopause, Serene, yeah. my little sister, you're, you're still perimenopause. I just jumped on the full train, but I didn't wait till menopause. I just decided yeah. to become fully optimized before it hit because my sister was like, she's like, Serene, oh little sister, if you, if you could do anything, don't do what I did, which is wait till post-menopause. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like there was a lot of um, memory recall. My brain, she said, it felt like it deteriorated in that yeah. stage of perimenopause. And she's like, don't do it to yourself. And, and the evidence is coming out. I mean, in that book, I'm not sure <laughs> if you're familiar with the book, The XX Brain, well, what's her name, Dr. Lisa, somebody. She, that's what she does. She looks at images of brain in, in, in women and, and she looks at like dementia risks and all these things. And she's been studying images of women's brains for 20 years and what she has found that the premenopause brain is different to the peri and the postmenopausal brains 
and the peri and the post are similar. They're different to oh. the pre. So it's in the peri years. It's in those eight years coming up, you know, like the 40 to 50, where these yeah. changes in the brain happen and they decline, especially in that year yeah. prior to menopause. Yeah. It's fascinating. You know, there's also the book, Stop the Thyroid Madness, which is an old book now. And, you know, yeah. hundreds of millions of women have read that book. I'm sure both of you are familiar with it. But like, you know, I, I had a mentor, a physician mentored me a long time ago, used to teach me that like the bottom line with women, and almost no one knows this, is if a woman has two children or more, they damage their thyroid. And Literally. oftentimes the thyroid is damaged permanently. Now in the United States, unfortunately- Love that nine. Yeah, yeah, right? Unfortunately in the United States, as we talked on our podcast that all three of us did together, which was awesome by the way, and I appreciate you guys having me on, we talked about the fact that the average physician gives a woman T3 and T4 at high levels and, you know, screws up their thyroid even more. And then obviously women become dependent on the thyroid medication. And then sometimes it causes other kind of, you know, disturbances and endocrine perturbations and whatnot. They lose hair. I mean, I know, I know I'm preaching to the choir, right? And I'm sure a lot of your audience knows all this, but it's mind blowing to think that there are still so many women out there who are essentially brainwashed and, you know, and trained that they can't use hormones because they're bad because of, you know, the, uh, the WHI study that happened in the early 2000s. And, and, you know, women were told that, you know, if you did hormones, you would get uh, uterine cancer, uh, you know, and, and then there was the whole thing about equine, um, you know, uh, Premier and all that stuff. And so there's just this giant subset of women in society, especially in the West, who don't think they can use hormones. And they just stop being women it's yeah. still so prevalent like it, you know it's it's called estrophobia right, right. i mean it's a fear right. of yeah. estrogen i think yeah. we've all had it at some time i mean i yeah. even had it in my earlier life you think of the word estrogen you immediately think of cancer it yeah. was like indoctrinated yeah. into even, the souls of women i even Everyone. like yeah. to push back at that word estrogen dominance yeah yep. i really like to push back on it because i feel like that brings fear too and i think sometimes we can be estrogen dominant, but really it's because we don't have enough estrogen. And right. that's you know, exactly right. Right. So we don't have enough estrogen to to cycle properly so we don't get enough progesterone. And and the that's how it got out of order because estrogen was actually lacking to begin with. That's by the way, you're so smart. You catch both of you are so smart. So I I, I literally battle this because when I hear physicians talk about estrogen dominance, and listen, I Without naming names, I hear a lot of very credentialed, you know, respected subject matter thought leader people talk about estrogen dominance and literally don't have any idea what they're talking about because it literally is a lack. We need healthy and robust levels of estrogen, both men and women. Mm. And they like to think that estrogen dominance is the reason that men have like skinny fat bodies or uh, man boobs are all these things. And it's like, no, all of that's caused by insulin resistance and inflammation, yeah. which mm -hmm. leads and, and, to those reasons. And what leads to insulin resistance, especially in women, the decline of estrogen. Exactly. I mean, estrogen sensitizes oh, us to, I, to insulin. So it's like, I mean, totally. I think, I mean, you want me to go on a rant about estrogen and estrogen dominance. You know, I, th I feel like it really got pushed in the 90s. Yeah. Like way yeah. after the WHI came out. Definitely. But, Definitely. Like it was like the rebound. Okay, let's just do progesterone now and re let's really push right. it. Progesterone has its place, but it's not the thing that that um you know sensitizes sensitizes to us to insulin, pulls down cortisol, keeps our body fat down. Um, estrogen is it? We we just went on a cruise, you know, and uh, it was a over sixty five cruise. Really, it was one of those really nice non party cruises, you know, <laughs> where no awful. one's really sloshing in their beer and the and the spas. You know, it's just really sophisticated <laughs> and lovely, and that's why we chose to go on that cruise. Well, but, we're trying to get our book written. Yeah, yeah, it was like finish the book. But I said to Pearl, I looked around and I said, this cruise, just the whole ship, there's just not enough estrogen on this whole place. Right. It's like you know, I just felt. It was so sad. The men and women started to just look alike, morph into one another. Yeah. They all had yeah. the thickening around the middle. Yeah. It was just, yeah. they just, it was, there was very s small distinctions between the men and the woman. Hmm. Well, we could go deep, a lot deeper on that. But if we did, I have to go get my tinfoil hat on if we start talking. <laughs> about but, but no, I mean, like, seriously, that is what's happening. There is a transmogrification of the DNA. And they are encouraged. When I say they, people are like, "Who's they, Jay?" Well, that's coming. The book is coming. Who <laughs> they are? But but the the there is a this like again this 
the word is transmogrification. People will hear me say that and they're like, did you make that word up? I'm like, no, go look it up. It's a real word. But they're basically changing the species of, and, and it's through the DNA. And it's, as you just both said, it's, they're attempting to create like this emasculated or hyper-masculine look. It's not a, it's not a hyper-masculine because obviously we don't want to have toxic masculinity, but they're, they're creating more of an androgynous look of both men and women. They're like getting rid of femininity and they're getting rid of masculinity and they're just creating like a hive-minded cyborg race. That's like, no, that's I agree. literally what's going on. I agree. Yeah, we're kind of pushing back on that too. I mean, you are of us, kind of, yeah. yeah. I mean, there needs to yeah. be a pushback. Of course. Well, I it's just love like too. Well, you, I know you both know this because my wife and I talk about this all the time, but like they're literally encouraging women that breasts are not feminine or breasts yeah. are not cool. You know, you know, they, they're, they're encouraging women to have their boobs chopped off or to have their breasts reduced or, or for women to have implants that those are not right. And, you know, you're going to yeah. get all these issues and stuff like that. And so it's like, yeah. again, it's, it's, it really is a time against creation you know because again obviously they don't want strong men they don't want alpha yeah. men right and they, and don't, they don't want feminine women have femininity yeah i totally agree and and we personally you know in our lives even more than what we show through our writings and on our podcasts we we really um and the way we raise our children contend for just celebrating the differences between men and women and how beautiful that is and how wonderful yeah. it makes society and how how strong it makes marriage. Absolutely. And you know what? I mean, even like, you know, we work out. Serene lifts heavy. I lift pretty heavy. She's a bit heavier than me. But I think still with women that lift heavy, there's that temptation and there's that risk to be imbalanced and shoot for, you know, the big guns. Right, We're all right. about strong, but you right. can still lift and create a beautiful feminine body 100%. with right. some wisdom with what you do. 100%. You know, so we're so we're still all about that the feminine shape with what with the way you eat, the way you lift, all of these things, and um, not about creating that this the male body just because just because we lift. Divine feminine, divine masculine has characteristics that cannot be destroyed, that cannot be defaced. They can't get rid of it. They can do whatever they want. You know, again, in, in counterculture or through culture, but it's really essentially counterculture. But I agree a hundred percent. I mean, there's. And, you know, to, to, to speak about that too, because I want to get to your guys' backstory, but like women are not going to build muscle unless they take copious amounts of anabolic agents, right? Like, I agree. A woman can be, be can, can look like both of you. They can look like my wife. You know, you can get lean. You can even have like a four or six pack if you're super lean and you have the right genetics, but you're not looking to get, you know, jacked. And, and had bulky muscles. And like I always tell people, like, it's not going to happen unless you use androgens. And, 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 and the funniest thing is too, and this is what's so mind blowing that so many people don't understand this. Like when people ask me, like, what is, how do we define testosterone? Like what is testosterone? And I say testosterone is the primary sexual glandular hormone in the body. And in fact, it is so prominent that it is the differentiation between masculine and feminine. In fact, a man, and the only difference between a man and a woman is that in utero, the zygote, the embryo is exposed to higher levels of testosterone versus higher levels of estrogen. And so the reason that we have all these people that are coming out today confused, let's just use that word, right? Uh, it's because they don't actually have enough free circulating levels of testosterone and estrogen to define their biology. And so that's why they're so confused. And then they go to the TV and the yeah. TV or the internet or whatever narrative is tells them that it's okay. And so they, you know, they have questions like, why don't I feel like a man or why don't mm -hmm. I feel like a woman? And so then the television and the narrative says, oh, well, you can change your sex and blah, 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 right. and go down those paths. But it's crazy if you really look at this from a biological perspective and you understand what's happening. And because again, a lot of doctors are afraid, you know, I'm I just play doctors on my podcast, but they're afraid to go into the public and talk about what's really happening. But this is yeah. literally a lack of testosterone or estrogen in utero. And why and is that happening? And instead of affirming what they were created to be and, and giving them, you know, maybe exogenous hormones that were designed for their unique sex. Yes. Then we just switch it around and give them blockers and hormones to change it all. It's such a 
Crime. And it drives them crazy. You know that too. Yeah. Like no, oh, yeah. nobody talks about that. But like the depression and the, that community is. Well, did you ravaged. did you did you ladies know this? Like I did not actually know this until like four four months ago. I can't remember who else had told me this, but I had no idea. But when you have a sex change, you cannot climax. I didn't You're know done. that. Wow. I did yeah. not know that. I had no clue. Yeah. That's yeah. that's a lot to give up. So when you <sighs> reverse your natural biology, <laughs> you also kill that. Wow. So imagine what these people Thanks. that are doing this, how frustrated they must yeah. be sexually and biologically to not be able to come to climax. Mm. You know, that's interesting that you said that because, you know, with female hormone optimization after postmenopause or even before, you know, we always say we work with doctors. We always say, hey, get your estradiol levels ample first. Yeah. Then if you need some testosterone as a woman, put totally. it in. But totally. get your estradiol there. And women that sometimes go too high in T and don't have enough E, they can't climb no, it. They can't. It becomes a problem. In That's fact, true. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes I think the women feel their most um, libido when their estrogen is high enough. They don't need to push testosterone all the way up. Amp. It's just a it, nice, yeah, a nice amount. Long as that estrogen is ample, it's foundation. I mean, we're all unique. There's no like set right. yeah. cookie color level, but yeah. way too high testosterone can stop that. So they yeah. can have that drive, but they can't do anything about it. Like they don't but reach anything. You both spoken to Susan Braden. I'm, I presume you guys have. No, have you ever no. To Susan? I, I've That's got not. to connect her with you too. So she's the like leading spokesperson on the world for like. So, you know, women's sexology. She's written like 49 books. She's amazing. She's 64. Yeah. Wow. And she's like probably one of the smartest women. She's a good friend of my wife and I. We, we actually met her. I met her like three years ago. But my wife and I met her together at A4M in Vegas in December. And now we're really close friends and we text each other all the time. But she is so intelligent. She's not a doctor. She's just like all of us, super smart, self-taught. But she is 64. She still is perfectly menstruating. She oh, uses wow. like a mixture of estradiol, cream. Uh, her, her, her doctor, who's supposed to come on this podcast, who we both cancel on each other, is Dr. Morgan Camp. And he's in uh, somewhere, in, I think, outside of Scottsdale in Arizona. But he works with like a lot of like well to do um, women, you know, who, who really want to keep their sexual sexual vigor and vitality like laid into life. But when she was telling me about what she was doing and then, you know, my wife who's also going through perimenopause right now and is, you know, just turned 52. Um, when she was talking to her about it, she was just blowing her mind. She's like, how do I, we need to talk more about this? But she's, like I said, 64 years old and she still menstruates and has no issues. And she's like, shit, I'm going to menstruate until I'm 80, but she's completely controlling it. Yeah. Through the use of estradiol cream. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, well, so that's that's amazing because it's it's yeah. kind of like high level as you know BHRT, but Serene does totally. that. Um, yeah. you know, she just does a rhythmic method where you put yeah. your estrad yeah. estradiol in high, and yeah. then you take your progesterone yeah. up, and then you curve it off, and you have a period. It's really good for the body. But some women never want to have a period after well, post menopause. It's also like our mother, no, you know, true. she's she's eighty three, yeah, and she and my father. Not that you know, we want to share everything, but they are so hot. They're crazy in love, and they've kept, they've contended for That's the amazing. intimacy in their marriage, and it's so beautiful. It's been such an example to Pearl and I. You never have to give that up. No, I mean sometimes you, you no. do if there's like situations, there's accidents, there's. So there's, there's things sure. that have happened, you know, paralyzed from the waist yeah. down or something. But yeah, um, and, and I've always, I've just been inspired by that. It's a beautiful thing to contend for. That's well, amazing. Mom, mom's hormonally optimized. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, and, that's and, all I was going to ask. Yeah. But 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 to to back to your point, because I think that, and, and by the way, this is an amazing conversation because I don't have these kind of conversations very often. The problem with women is. A, again, the lack of awareness, the B, the fear and the intimidation from the WHI and all the BS. Uh, but then as you both know, because we talked about it on the last show, is what doctor do I work with? And, and, and you know, the issue becomes with men, it's pretty cookie cutter and templatized, right? Like we know there's uh, injectable, you inject daily or every other day or the two primary, you know, uh, injection formulations or you do transcrotal, which is what I use, which is cream on the base of the scrotum, right? And those are pretty simple. And then, you know, you don't it block estrogen and, you know, you might need pregnenolone and you might need SDHEA and, you know, various other things based on biomarkers. But with women, it's way more niche. 
it, it's it's unique. Each one of you is kind of separate, and you all have your own stuff going on. And so you really have to titrate down, you know, around, up, and 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 and, and the issue is that there's just not a lot of real world class expert women treating women you know there's guys out there who i don't think know what they're doing but that's another story for another day but like it's just <laughs> women are definitely more complex to hormonally optimize than men are we we are coming out we have yeah we have been working um for a couple of years now uh, it's been in our heart for over a decade but to bring a platform um to women to bring them r- really dialed in hormonal help yeah because what we've been asked over and over the last decade is Serena and Pearl, help me hormonally, help me. I mean, you know, we were going to our own doctors. They got all full. I mean, it's, yeah. if there's a good doctor treating women, changing their lives, they will be full up before you know it. They can't take patients. The people yeah, in exactly. our area that are good, exactly. they're a year, have a year waiting list. Yes. But, you, know, you know what we see, though? I mean, we've looked at thousands of women blood work. They send them to us. We're not doctors. Sure. We're just geeks. We're just, yeah, we course. just haul our nerves, right? Yeah. But. What we see is so many women say, but I'm on BHRT, I'm taking hormones, it's not working. You know what we see when we look at their blood work? They're still in menopausal levels. Right. They, yeah. they get a little cream for their arm. Right. It, and and it then they, they flashes slightly. Yep. They go, you know, estradiol levels go from 10 to yep. 27, yeah. 32. 30. Yeah. I mean, they don't even hit that 100 mark where brain protection And see, starts. the thing that we realized too, you know, just because, you know, our book started out as a, as a health lifestyle sure. book. And we realized we could only help, you know, to a certain level. And, and women right. aged into, a, into a, a season where they were doing all the right things. They were ticking all the right boxes. They had exercise yeah. dialed in. They ate clean and beautifully, very, you know, insulin, you know, they weren't over-carbing. Right. And- they were thickening around the middle and everything yeah. just would stop working and they'd feel like their body was betraying them. And we realized the only way to fully help people was to, you know, optimize their hormones at a yeah. certain season. Yeah. But but something you both just said, and I and I know what the answer is and why this happens is it, the doctors are afraid to take them to those higher levels. Oh, the yeah. higher levels is half to this is my estrogen is go. like 800 and something but that's what we She's have to go to yeah. be optimized but, but she feels is, good <laughs> but look the doctors and that's the answer it, you know my mentor was like there's a two-fold goal of hormonal optimization <laughs> and that is joy and balance who cares so glad what you the spent lab measurement numbers? yes yes who cares yes. what the lab measurement numbers are but the problem is and you know any good doctor who understands this and, and knows better is like look it's our medical licenses that are on the line. Yeah. You know, if we put you, male or female, into these, you know, astronomically high levels, which they they admit are where we need to be to really truly feel optimized, all they have to do is get op- I mean, uh, audited by the state medical licensing board, and then they got to go up and get an attorney, and they got to say, you know, if they call them up, like, why is this person's thyroid bottomed out, and why is their testosterone, and progesterone, and estradiol here, here, and here. And, and, you know, it's a game. And so it's, it's really sad, but the best people at this are people like us. My doctor says it's too high. He said, your estrogen's too high, but I keep it there. Yeah. Because she feels so good. Her skin's not (laughs) aging. You feel happy. You feel joy. Um, you know, and, and 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 the studies, when you dig into them, show that it's protected against cancer, even breast cancer. There's no too there's no too high of level of estrogen. The doctors have been brainwashed. He knows that too. He just has to say that. Exactly. <laughs> but they've been brainwashed by studies yeah. that show that there is like correlation, not causation, but correlation to They're high me- estrogen levels in cancer, which is complete BS. Mm-hmm. Cancer happens to women, you know, pr- primarily when they're past 60, 55 right. to what is it, 70, that's the biggest age group. Yes. Where are their estrogen levels at that point? In they're the in the tanks. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, same as prostate cancer with men. Cancer happens for two reasons, and these were metaphysical. Lack of forgiveness, lack of love and trust of self. And over time, those things metastasize literally and figuratively because you don't forgive and you never learn to love and trust yourself. And, 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 and it's like, you know, Louise Hay, there's so many people out there that have written books on this, that there's always like a, you know, underlying spiritual amputation reason that leads to a physiological disease ideology at some point in time, if you don't ever address it. And so many people never address those two things. And I agree with you, Jay, to a certain extent. I, I totally agree with you. And, I, you know, we, 
we were saying we're very faith based. Um, and yep. it's so clear science backs up the Bible every time, you know, it's, yep. you know, bitterness dries up the bone yep. and merry heart doeth good like medicine. But, you know, there are other times too where people just get dosed in toxic chemicals like, like my oh, son. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Roundup fell all over his, his clavicle absolutely. area. And he, so there's that. Well, yeah. tell the story. Her son, when he was 18, he, he did it. He was working for this job where they were uh, spraying around uh, uh, cell towers. I got like, what, $6 yep. a cell tower. So if you did 40 cell towers in a day, you made more money. So yep. it, they worked out of town. And so you just go to the motel, the next motel that night, and then, you know, go repeat the day. So the first cell tower in the morning, he put the backpack on the sprayer and he forgot to zip it up, jumped over a fence and it doused him. All he had, because he, he had three gallons of Roundup, Roundup, and he had one bottle of water. So he tipped it off and he just kept working until that evening at seven yeah, o'clock at the motel. Yeah. yeah, it's stage yeah. four, Hodgkin's lymphoma, but he's um doing well now. It was very yeah, resistant. No, but, yeah. Did he ever end up talking to Dr. Yes, Evelyn? he's had an incredible, incredible visit that he just feels so taken care of and so That's awesome. in the right in the right place. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, he's an amazing he's a well so so then that that's he, so he's the other he's the other kind. Like they're literally angels and they take on that to grow and involve their soul like at, at an exponential rate. That's true too. Yeah. Because when I spoke to him, I was like, wow. Oh, he's <laughs> awesome. Hey, thanks for sharing that doctor too with us. My husband now is is lined up. He's got his, oh, his awesome. uh, visit in a couple of weeks. We're excited. That's, thanks that's for that. That's totally awesome. Yeah. And your son's a credit to you. I mean, obviously, like they say, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, but um, he's, nah, he's way better than he's me. An amazing, <laughs> amazing young man. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that he, because sometimes when I get those stories, you know, I, and I turn them over to people, I'm always kind of like, you know, they may be reluctant. I mean, I know those guys won't be at a point where they won't turn you away, but there's sometimes there's just like, you know, whenever they hear the word metastatic or metastasis, you know, they kind of get freaked out about like not prescribing. That's awesome that they're treating him and that now you're going to also use your, your husband's. Hey, hey another good great. piece of news since uh, we recorded that podcast together. You know, I told you my husband's been on uh, T for 17 yep. years because yep. he had a microadenoma. Uh, um, but he's taken the AI, the estrogen inhibitor all that time. So, you know, I played him that part of the podcast where you're like, get yeah. your bed off, get him off. So he's off, <laughs> he's off. So that's awesome. It's a big step. Well, we're just in Mexico better? and Did got some better? Mexican Rivera. <laughs> Did he actually feel better that he's off it? Or can well, he he's not, not telling me that yet. I mean, I feel like he's doing fine. You know how you said it's very much placebo in their brains. Yeah. It's been oh, it's 17 totally. years using yeah. an estrogen inhibitor. and But, um, <laughs> you know, I just sh I told him, I said, it's all those vessels around your heart. we got to protect you. I want you around. So, you know, he's kind of doing that for me right now. Well, how much and was he using, by the way? Do you remember what his dose oh, was? Oh, yes, it was... Um, Okay, so I don't know. It's just one of the pills. What are they? How many milligrams? It's in, like, well, in? they can be like half a milligram to a milligram. Oh, okay. So he uses half per week of okay, one so of them. And I think should be fine then. That's a very yeah. low dose. But the one way that you can make sure that he doesn't have an issue is just get a DEXA scan because a DEXA yeah. scan will tell his bone mineral density. Okay. And if All he right. has any like fractures or like his bone mineral density is showing it's like low for his age. Probably won't, but if it does, then he can. He knows that the culprit was the AI. Yeah, but you said something about blood vessels. That was the big thing for me because he already has some heart issues, and I'm like, yeah. okay, that that's scary. I don't. I mean, the estrogen protects the heart, right? That, I mean, exactly. that's why women who go through menopause, we're all fine until we go through menopause, and then women just start dropping from. That's heart exactly attacks. right. And yeah. estrogen that confers all of the protection to biological systems. So it's like if we're yeah. blocking estrogen, we are causing downstream issues. And even if we're not seeing it, like your husband being on AI for 17 years, internally, there are things going bad. Maybe mm -hmm. only minusculely, but it's a good thing to get them off that. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. We just did a podcast with all those doctors two weeks ago, and we, you know, we, we're doing where we analyze like well-known people's statements and comments and say, tr you know, fact or, fact or fiction. And we did a, a, a very famous Hollywood um, uh, doctor who does TRT to a lot of celebrities and A-listers and like 90% of everything he was saying in the podcast was completely fault and not evidence-based. And so like we were, you know, pointing that out, but it's the idea that, that high estrogen is bad. High estrogen uh, causes mm -hmm. cancer. You know, if you're going to have optimized testosterone levels, you want to have controlled estrogen levels. It's the complete opposite. Again, the it's higher 
the testosterone, the more you want your estrogen to cleave into through the enzyme aromatase into estradiol. I mean, estradiol into estrogen because estrogen confers protection to everything, the brain, the heart, oh, yeah. skin, sexual functioning, everything is estrogen. It has comes there ever been a hormone that has been dragged through the mud? What's much? Well, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be estrogen? Because, you know, it seems like it's, uh, if you believe this, you know, or not, the forces, the dark forces out there, you of know, course. they don't want people Parasitics. well. They don't want the people parasitic. well. That's what I call them. <laughs> they don't want people well. No, and so, of course, of course they're going to demonize the very thing that is so protective. And if you, Listen, it, it, it goes back to this statement, I, and, and I want to get to your guys' stories, and then we'll talk about peptides and GLPs especially. Um, um, doctors, this is another, again, a very famous doctor who I've never allowed to name, but mentored me at one time. This is going back in 2014, and he told me, it's a he, I gave that away, but he told me that if metformin and growth hormone were in the water supply, there wouldn't be a single hospital on earth. What? Wow. That's what he said. Oh, wow. And, and if you look into both of those things and what they do, and they've also demonized met for, I mean, uh, growth hormone. Now, obviously we talk about peptides, but you know, I tell anybody, if you can get pharmaceutical grade, you know, genotropin pens, you mm. know, from Pfizer, one IU for a woman or one and a half IUs to a man to two IUs, depending on their size, Monday through Friday forever is like, the nectar of the gods. So we're, we're taking notes. <laughs> the, uh, you don't want to tell us too much stuff because we're doers. Yeah, we're, 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 we might have to have a talk after the show's <laughs> over. I'll text you guys. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Oh yeah. Right, so let's get your backstory. Let's just get both of your backstory because I know it's pretty amazing. And just give me the like seventy-five thousand foot version so we can okay. talk about that guys we, too. We were born nerds into you know into a health nerds to a crunchy family. Like our Nana, um, you know, she made the, uh, all bread was made from home. You know, she had millet porridge every morning and, and all of that, never allowed any packaged food. We, and then, of course, our mother raised us the same way. And when we were little and our friends would be hanging at the mall, we would be riding our push bikes down to their health food store and reading all of this, the books in the corner. And we couldn't get on a, enough of enough information. And it just kind of morphed into, um, wanting to find the perfect eating lifestyle and especially when we started being mothers you know and we're like wow we've got children we want we want to like how do we feed them the best way so we just it kind of went into an obsession of studying it, research it really it kind of did it honestly it did us right but it did us wrong because oh, yeah. when yeah. you're reading all the different authors and all the wisdom of men and all the different things you know everybody has their research to back everything up sure. so of course <laughs> of course whenever they were we did veganism hardcore I, oh i was a plant raw food plant vegan for about eight years um through three pregnancies i had teeth crumble out of my mouth you know because there wasn't enough protein there wasn't enough <laughs> like literally i mean all i kicked the oven off of my deck i had four dehydrators whirring making bird seed like burgers yeah. uh I mean, we're extreme so whatever we do we do and and you yeah. well, you know i mean i did loco i did it all because i didn't want to let i don't know what it was it's not so much a pride vanity thing i wanted to find out how i could keep a feminine fit we were vain. like we were having lots yeah. of babies you know oh, oh, I, I, i'm like i want to have babies i love motherhood i love I love this. I love being pregnant. That's how we celebrated femininity. We really, we really enjoyed <laughs> the fact that we could have babies. But for women, it is yeah. terrifying when you you need your stomach to grow. You need to eat for your baby. You need to breastfeed. You need to do yeah. all these things. But you don't yeah. know how to get your body back, really. Right. And we right. did extreme things. And our, we got to the end of ourselves. I remember I was <laughs> I'd been vegan for twelve years. And I was, I had low iron. I had to take a nap every afternoon. I, I could barely drag myself through the day, you know, five kids. And um, she had fibroids and she bled. Yeah, and I had all these reproductive issues. And I'm like, I'm looking up, you know, what do you do if you have fibroids? You know what it said? Eat a vegan diet. <laughs> well, that's the diet she was on. I had done that for 12 years and I was just slammed my hand down. And I'm like, I'm sick of it. I'm so sick of this. In fact, like I was so messed up too. Like I I got emaciated. In one of my pregnancies, I only gained six pounds. The baby was eight pounds. You know, so if you think I'm slim now, I was probably like 50 pounds lighter. No. Wow. You're such an a, a exaggerated. I don't so know. Wait, I was I have to 20 both pounds. Of you. you think vegans are I don't are know. Informed? I was like, what's that? Do you guys both think that vegans are insane? 
I feel sorry and I feel compassion for them because I was such a staunch vegan. I was dogmatic. I would I would yeah. debate about it. I was like, this is yeah. the way humans are meant to live. But it was killing me. Like literally, I worked out for yeah. hours every day. I saw no results. I had sarcopenia. Yeah. Even got yeah. cellulite on my arms. I don't know where right. it got cellulite because I had no fat. But I had like a bloated goat stomach because of all yeah. that roughage of yeah. just eating yeah. roughage. But all that to say is I, I had just read all this wisdom of man and came sure. to like a low point. So I've got the Bible out and like I've always seen this as like spiritual guidance, but yeah. there's got to be something practical in here for me. And so I, I like, I was in tears. I like peeled the Bible over with my nose, like with tears. You're and like, I read I'm this done. verse. I read this verse and it said, you know, I give you the, the, the herb of the field, the fat of the, 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 yeah. the ram, the milk of the goat, the blood of the grape. And it went through all the food groups. And I'm like, He's there a giver. He created yeah. food to, for my blessing. And all I've done yeah. my whole life is exclude, mm-hmm. like, okay, don't have meat or don't have dairy or don't have carbs or don't have fat. And it was always yeah. exclusive. And there it was included. And I'm like, I love it. This is for me. <laughs> so what we did, you know, we just like nerds. So we started like, okay, no more taking it out. We're going to include all the food groups. We're going to do the clean ones, of course. You know, we're not sure. going to go eat, eat crap. But we started including... I started including like brown rice and and cream in the same meal and I gained weight. Mm-hmm. I put all these things in the same meal, all these good farm foods, you know, to make me feel better. I did feel better, but I started like growing out of my genes really badly. So we started really learning about healthy food makes you gain weight. Breast milk yeah. like makes fat babies, you know. We figured out how to eat healthy food, all the all the food groups. We figured out how to do it as as mothers in the home and to do it well and to do it smartly. We wrote a book about it, never thinking we thought we'd give it to some friends or, or you know, family members. We just wanted to write it down, never thinking anything would happen. We we self published, put it out there, and it blew up. I was I was hanging my diapers on the line, like you know, I had nine <laughs> children, and they're all just you know, the young ones are all hanging around me, and chicken with chickens were running around. We're in the farm, and my husband was over in Kuwait, you know, um, contracting for the military, and I was just kind of like a like it's doing it single mothering, even though I was married, but he was just away yeah, 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 trying yeah. to provide for us. And then I get this phone call and it's like, your book's a New York Times bestseller. And I'm like, what's New York Times? What <laughs> there's a bestseller? I didn't know. It was crazy. We didn't know. We had no ambition. No, we yeah. just, we love to study and research and we put ourselves through the weird gamut, but we had no ambition to do. But all these moms, they just started sharing the book with one another. Yeah. And, and little yeah. did we know this community started and, they wanted products from us and, and it, it was all Domain. by accident. And as I think it was because people were so done with excluding. They were so done mm-hmm. with, with like having to do unsustainable diets that, that made right. that made the kitchen um, a battlefield and not a place of celebration. And we were like, no, you can have your steak. Yes. You know, and you can have um uh, you can have all those things you think you can't that you think's gonna put weight on you. You can have those things. And you just got to do it in a smart way. And so we kind of, we learn a lot from the bro community, you know. The, the, yeah, of the course. Bio- the bro, they- that's when you learn. I mean, I mean, that's where everybody, including physicians, learn because they're always, uh, it's I always say they're the original, they're the OG biohackers. Yeah, right? they are. And then they wreck themselves on the way, but they learn oh, amazing stuff. Serena yeah. and I learned about leptin and ghrelin and we learned yeah. about insulin on the bro. We we would get on these and bro sites, like yeah, we have course. our names, you know, and yeah. then and then we would start talking to one another and we'd start <sighs> like the bro language. Totally yeah. traditionally raised, like never a swear word in our house. And all of a sudden, I'm like, get your ass over here, Pearl, read this. She's like, what? <laughs> you know, we'd be dropping like ass words, you know, bro talk. And we're like, oh, we've been <laughs> on the bro forums too long. I, I you know I probably would be willing to wager that you guys were on t- or some similar forums that I was. Oh, but remember uh, back then we all had an anonymity because we had handles. <laughs> yes, and it was before Facebook groups were around, right? So it was the forums. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Uh, those handles were like we were like, whoa, okay, you guys like your pictures, don't you? <laughs> you, you have to be very close friends with me to ever give up my handle because I'm <laughs> kind of wary. <laughs> oh, and You're Pearl. I had a handle. Pearl. Pearl is such a crazy. You know, she uh, growing up in our house. She was the, we called her the spy. She loved to like lay under our brothers' beds while they were talking to their girlfriends, so she'd get the whole scoop to tell mom and dad. Well, she and she did. It morphed into a different way of spying, but she had like a a false name and everything. She'd yeah. go on these sites. Sometimes it was a guy's name. She'd go on guy sites and 
and just hear all of how their diets weren't working, what was working, and then all different kinds of stuff. So she just got the insight. Oh, I love it. I still go lurk on the bro forums. It's the best. Well, I, so so how long has it been now in time, like in years since you guys killed veganism and moved into like optimization? Yeah, we, we wrote that book. It took us five years to write the book because we were like, you know, who cares, right? Yeah. So, and then we, that's been out 12 and a half years. So it's been close to, so 17, 18 years. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so when, and then when did you guys start like truly getting hormonally optimized, which, you know, talks about what we want to talk about right now with like peptides and, and getting into, obviously the GLPs is the last couple of years, but like how long have you guys been using peptides? You know what? We're we're kind of ha- we're learning from you about the peptides. We love the okay. peptides. We embrace yep. them. We went to yep. the World Peptide Congress with Dr. Seeds, and we're just yep. like ah, like it was like drinking up to a fire hydrant of water. We love it. My husband is on the peptides. The I, GLP I, I use BPC, you know, to be five hundred, whatever those ones, the basics. Sure. GLP one I haven't used because we're pretty slender, and um, yeah, I don't, don't want to drop. It. Fat. Like I need for a job, you know. You know yeah, don't want to drop course. fat, but so many of the women we talk to, we we want to kind of be educated so we can reach out to our community. But hormones, for me, it's been almost three years uh, hormonally optimized. And for me, I, I was having babies, you know, and so it's only in the last year that I. But you got it, yeah, thyroid done. Oh yeah, my thyroid done a couple of years ago. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But we've so, always been interested in hormones. Yeah. Well, I do want to tell you about because this is very new in the Jay Campbell ecosystem and I'll send you guys a lot of information. That, that, that's actually the people I'm talking to here in a, little, in a couple minutes, but um, there's a company in New Zealand, oh. uh, Kiwis, and they have created a, co- a product called Calo Curb. And it's basically an oral capsule, literally a natural supplement that is a GLP-1. They're, they have to be ca- careful how they say this, activating supplement, but Okay. Ladies, I, I, ask you not. It is Ooh. just as strong. Whoa! As the injectable GLP one no agonist. No I, I use it now. My myself, Please. my wife is using it. In fact, I'm super lean. I've been using it this entire month for this uh, filming. I'm going to be doing in Mexico this weekend, and I, I tell people the truth. I mean, like it. it and How can I get my hands on that? Hey, that's it's kind of interesting. Is it's it using capsule. like the gut or what? What's it using? Yeah, so basically it's a it's a the the it's called amaracate and it's the natural yeah. hops extract, which is a flower that's grown in yeah. New Zealand. And when it goes into the digestive system, it increases GLP one hormone. Yeah. And so essentially it's naturally increasing GLP and Can the, I just go and the, order it? Yeah, I'll send you a link for it. I'll send you guys a link. Uh, uh, what I'll to be truthful, what I really want to do is I want to introduce you guys to the owners because you guys will clean up. I mean, I well, mean, we like, born in New Zealand. Yeah, well, your, like, entire, Kiwi passports. your entire audience who has weight issues. Well, look, it's not just for people that have weight issues. If you're an intermittent faster, you want to take this supplement when you fast. Right, but your people appetite, do but it does, there's no side effects. The only thing that it might do, and this is really a you know early onset administration, is it might create a little bit of a laxative effect, and you might yeah. have to go to the bathroom number two. But who cares? I mean, you know, yeah, it's I like going to the. I love going to the bathroom. <laughs> exactly. Who doesn't? But you know, I'm not joking. When I saw this company at A4M on the third week of uh, December in Vegas, I was walking by with my wife and a couple other people, and I was like, "Is this serious?" And so, you know, again, there's no. No coincidences, mm-hmm. there's only synchronicities in the universe. I walk up to the booth and I start talking to this woman that just looked like, you know, a booth babe. And I'm talking to her and she's really smart. And, you know, I ask her questions and, you know, she doesn't know who I am and we don't know each other. And I'd say, look, I can really help you with this product. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. You know, I'd probably yeah. sell more peptides than anybody yeah. on the planet as an affiliate marketer. And, uh, if it works as you say it does, you know, I would love to get involved and, you know, can you connect me to your ownership group? And she said, yeah, no problem. And I'm like, okay, well, what's her number? And she's like, you're talking to her. Uh, so, so like, she was the no way. She had the so accent then, and all? Oh, the total, total. Why, and, and why so, hops? Had they look into hop? What, what, what is it? It must be a particular kind of hop, so. So because it's, called, it's only grown um, in so New they Zealand. Patented it, but it's called the Amara. It's called Amarasate. It's spelled A M A R S A T E. But it's basically uh, the native or the you know constituent of the hops extract, the flower. And so when you wow. swallow it, it's also they also have a little bit of canola oil, and everybody freaks out. And they're like, "Oh, it's a GMO oil. Why would they do that?" And they're like, 
we have a scientific reason why they're doing it, but you know, because yeah. people are going crazy now, we're going to probably change it to raw grape seed or something. Yeah, that's true. they have a reason, but it's yeah. it's a it's a minuscule be- amount. Credible for the blood sugar, just like the GLP ones, because some people are doing it, you know, because they're diabetic. And yes. my husband just, he kind of has this, no matter how clean he eats, how matter his exercise is dialed in, his, he has really high fasting morning blood glucose. Yeah. And yeah. So that's why he's on GLP one. But it'd be great if he could just pop a capsule. Oh, so no, interesting. Think, so that's the thing. And, and here's the best part about it like when you really start looking at the science, you compare and contrast. When you eject the GLPs, whether it's semaglutide, trozapatide, there's other stuff coming, you're on all the time, right? Because you're ejecting, it's now raising it. But when you take the capsules, it's only working in the time it clears the system. And it's like a 24-hour half-life in the capsule. So you, mm. you can go, like my diet is every other day fasting, right? So I only take them on my fasting days. Mm. And it works Interesting. incredibly well because there's one other thing that they don't have science on this. By the way, this company has a lot of clinical research. but they don't have a study on this yet, but they're working. They're about eight months into the study. But I, after using it now for six weeks, can tell you that I know they're onto something. What it's doing or the Amrosate is doing is it's simulating a healthier microbiome. Right. So Yay. even when you are eating later, when you're not fasting, you can't eat as much. Mm. That's interesting. It's now, you, is that why I'm so full all the time? You're full, but I'm not. Yeah, but I'm full all the time. And But I have a very diverse large microbiome Whoa. that's from her years of kefir and baobab hey yeah, but you um, jay jay you um have been honest about what you try right you 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 100%. love terza sema and then you tried retro true what's the name of it retro true side okay yeah, and Reticu-tide. you were like hey guys i don't know about that you you were honest you said hey yeah, maybe so, not so for me it, it really so retro true tide you know again full disclosure it works really really well but if you're already lean and pretty hyper muscular it's going to increase metabolic activity so much that it actually increases hunger. Oh, so interesting. So you don't want that, right? Especially if you're trying to lose weight, but it, but it still burns calories at an accelerated rate. So that's why I tell people, if you're going to use red trutide, take terzapatide if you need the appetite suppression. But, but what about, Jay? Jay, what about the red trutide could help some of these people that kind of ruin their metabolism when they take- Oh, it'll definitely you help. Know, they take to Zepatide because they just stop eating. Like they just, it, eating is offensive and, and that almost is, to them. Th- that's 100% accurate. And and that is an education process from the doctor and from the, obviously the patient. And and, and I look, I see this so much. That's why I'm telling a lot of people now that, you know, stop or, or before you start, use cow or curb and get your, you know, the fundamentals dialed in first. Because if you think you're going to inject your Zepatide, stop eating and lose a lot of weight because you won't eat, it's going to have massive negative repercussions, right? Because you're going to shut down thyroid, you're going to delay your metabolism, and you're going to have rebound weight gain. Yeah. yeah. Now, can I ask you a question? I have my own personal thoughts about it, but I want to hear from you. Sure. Like, Even though like, you're on his podcast. <laughs> yes. Okay. Sorry. But like, so, you know, you take the chizepatide and, you know, a lot of people start eating less and just describe everything you just said. And they, they lose muscle, right? Yeah. But it's not like the desepatide is going in there and just trying to find muscle and eat it up just for fun, right? It's because when you when anyone doesn't eat like that, right, they, they cannibalize their muscle. Or is it particularly a muscle-eating drug? Like, no, what is no, your- no, no. It's totally from a lack of protein consumption. Yes. So all okay, great. This, so what happens is, is you don't eat enough protein. You know, again, I know we talked about this on the show we did previously- the number one uh, nutritional deficiency of women is protein malnutrition. They don't eat enough that protein. That's brilliant. I, I mean, that's I want to quote you on that. No, the no, American woman. Number one, women do not eat enough protein. They have a protein phobia. They think if they yes, eat they too much meat, they're going to get fat, blah, blah, blah. But so that's what happens. And so then when a woman takes oh. a, a GLP, a strong one, they eat no meat. Yeah. No, no. And so before yeah. you know it, two weeks have gone by and they've literally you know, have a 250 grams a week protein deficit and there's no issue. There's no yeah. other option but to lose bone mineral density and muscle. Yeah. And yeah. instead they eat half a piece of bread with butter and that's their meal because exactly. they can't get past it. Right. You know what? I mean, I was reading the other day that, you know, the the, the US recommendations for protein are only what, 0. Uh, 0.84. It's, a joke. it's ridiculous, it's a joke. but women eat less than that. That's They're on average less than 50 grams a day of protein. They do. 
They do. I know they when do. they have eggs, they're like, just one or two. I mean, what? See, that's five so or 10 bad. grams of protein. That's it's nothing. It's so bad that Big Pharma now is already, because you know the game they play, right? Oh, well, let's develop a drug to handle the protein starvation and the protein malnutrition. So now they're coming out with like these, uh, they're basically called PPAR inhibitors. Like, like talk about the bro world. So the bro <laughs> world already has Go into your special cupboard and bring out uh, your stuff. I, oh, I've got a big <laughs> box over here. <laughs> Hold on, show no, us please. that. Put that right here. Let me see. So this is called GW0742. There's another one called Carterine. But these things yeah. are, they're called PPAR inhibitors. And they're basically, um, they specify lean muscle uh, mass preservation. So like oh, if you're, some of that. Eating, you're eating low carbs and you're fasting and you're doing cardio and you're trying to get ripped or whatever, like if you take a little bit of this like twice a day, it will preserve muscle. What so about think, menopause when women? I'm sorry, say it again. What about menopause where women just tend to lose? Like say they just choose not to optimize. Would that help them? They tend to lose muscle at oh, that the, time. I mean, you these know? Things, my wife uses carterine when we're like dieting. You know, I mean, I mean, yeah. there, there's there's a lot of science on this that you know these are, so like all the bro world bro worlds or the bro um, SARM dealers sell these things. Now these aren't SARMs; these are literally drugs that are sp- sp- made for dieting to preserve muscle. But like big pharma is making very higher classes of these that will cost infinitely more money than yeah. they will sell to all these women who have these phobias of, of eating too much protein. But see, that's a, I'm, I'm really gra- glad, Serene, that you brought that up because that's a, that's a serious question. Like the, the doctors are so clueless. They will tell women what you said is true, which, oh, no, that's not true. What Govi eats muscle. I've yeah. literally heard them say that. Yeah. So there's yeah. so much disinformation on, on GLPs. Yes. But, you know, I would say we're a year away from people really, truly understanding them because since you and I spoke, there's been so much information that's come out. I mean, it's now like causing the fast food industry to have their margins crushed. Wow. Because people aren't going to eating fast food now, right? So, I mean, these yeah. things are doing massive, mm-hmm. uh, creating massive help and solutions to a lot of people who mm-hmm. normally don't have any willpower to do it. It just, you know, again, it comes back down to education because the people that do use them but don't know how to use them productively are having the repercussions and they yeah. are horrible. They're game bad. For my husband, game changer. But he hasn't lost any muscle because he got in the gym. Of course. He knows what he just decided. Do, he's yeah. his wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, well, ladies, this has been such an amazing podcast. Let me actually put this up here. I'm going to be back on with your guys coming up too. Uh, ladies and gentlemen and all the amazing people that watch the Jay Campbell podcast, please always, as always, support the folks that come on, buy their books. What are the, what are the names of your guys' books, the two, the two well, most the, recent? Uh, one that we really, really, really care about is just on the cusp, you know? It's, Trim Healthy Wisdom, but we've got the whole Trim Healthy Mama series. So there's Trim Healthy Mama and then so Trim Healthy Plan. Store, and tri- Trim right? Healthy. Yeah. 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 So guys, we've actually got a new uh, you've got a new YouTube uh, membership where we work out and just you know do a, a bunch of like lifting called heavy trial stuff. healthy lifting heavy stuff for women. Yeah, that's awesome. Very glute focused. Yeah. Well, so um, what we're gonna have to do is my wife and I are gonna come up your way and we'll all no, just like powwow yes. and because I, I want to help you guys with the hormone stuff because I think you have a put bigger your ten opportunity. Hat on when there. you come out to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we want. Jay to talk to us about hormones, bigger oh. opportunity. Yep, definitely. No, yeah, no. I mean, I want to. I want to be. If if you guys are open to it, I want to get involved with you guys when you guys yes. do the female stuff. Because, like, I, you know, I think there's that's the biggest opportunity on the planet right now is to <laughs> help women with hormones. It's so huge. The need. Is well, we're, the we're actually, need you know, we're we're really honing in on that. We're coming to the our last leg of the journey. We'd love for you. Well, okay, so you what's your, to put your... let me, well, so when this one, okay, so let, let me, let's end this podcast and then I'll talk to you guys for one second. So again, guys, gal, go to store, www.store.trimhealthymama.com. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.